So now I'm just working on the steering column, putting it together and these bolts that were all tore up when I took it apart. I was able to, these little metal clip retainer clips, I just took my body hammer and straightened them out and they pop back on there. And I'm just gonna run a die on all the screws just so they thread together easily and I don't have a problem putting it together. I got all the, all the bolts, that was one of the worst ones there. I had to grip with the vice grips, but I'll just put that one under the carpet. But yeah, I don't need to weld these or anything. Just kind of clean them up here and call them good. So I'm just going to do this to all the threads on all the fasteners because this will just make life easier on reassembly. That just makes clean those up and just makes life a lot easier. I cleaned this rubber gasket up here. This this little bit was still stuck on the car so I got it out. So I'll, I'll put this uh, little bit back in here. I'll figure out how it goes. I think it goes like that. And I'll uh, put a little silicone on it when I put it together. But yeah, it cleaned up pretty nice. There's the numbers if anyone's interested. This goes up in the car. This is the outside. So this is what you don't see on the inside because this is covered with carpet and this is up under the dash. And that's where the clutch linkage would have went through right here if you had a stick shift. But that's gonna that that's what you're gonna see inside the car with that metal piece around there. But it's again it's all covered up, so you really don't it's not really that visible. This part that rides in the in this part see how that goes in there so I cleaned that up and I'll grease all that up good with white grease before it goes together I cleaned the inside of that tube out too and I didn't paint the, the tube here so that when I uh, go to put it together it doesn't uh, you know it just won't stick on there. I'll put a little grease or oil on it. And I clean up the the wiring harness. And this is one of those flash bulb type bulbs. So I guess I'll just leave it in there. It's probably the original bulb. It, it works. So I'm not going to fool it. I cleaned all this up. The horn contacts all look good. Everything looks good there. So I'm just, and I clean cleaned up this, bead blasted all these, and this is a, a satin black, so they're still drying, they're still a little glossy because they're they're drying, and I even painted this little nub that sticks out. I took this and bead blasted it all, inspected the rubber thoroughly, inspected everything, it all looks really, really good. It's like brand new, in fact. Does it show in there? This is what I am going to use on all the moving parts. And I put some of that white grease, I oiled it, and put white grease in that shift shaft bushing. And I'm going to put some white grease on this so that doesn't seize to it. And I also uh, did some um, assembly here. These got one more nut that's drying. I had to go in my parts stash and find one, but you can kind of see how those go in. And they have a little clip and it holds them there. And these are those square holes are in, so they don't turn when you tighten them up. Well, that's fine when they're brand new nuts. But when they're old and rusty, they twist in there. But see, you can turn them right down nice now because I tapped out all the holes. i got to find the little bit of gasket that's missing there. It was there. It just fell off, but the rubber that was torn is right there. But I'll put a little sealer on this when I put it together anyway. Just make sure there's no water leaks into the car from the engine compartment. These three screws here... Fold it, whoops, there, there, and I think, let's see, there, there, and I think there. I don't, I think 
two of them didn't have uh, fasteners in them. But there we go. So and I put the nuts in these, and these are all cleaned up too. So you know they all turn. So I'll be able to turn it together with my fingers, and I'll put some no C's on all the threads before I uh, put it together. But that way. You know, I can just put it together with my fingers, and we'll, it'll take me. If they, if those nuts came loose like they do now, you know, turn like they do now, it would have taken me 15 minutes and not two hours to get the steering column out because these were the these bolts turning on. These were the the hassle. I just unloosened these uh, two two screws, and then this just kind of lift it out so I'm going to go clean this up and put some grease on it and put it in the new collar and then I'm going to install a new collar so you can see the opening here and you can see this here this has to go into that opening and then that slot there has to go over well I don't know if it shows up or not but that thing right there so I'm going to try and get everything together here I horsed with this for a little while and basically you're not going to get the wiring through with this collar off because then when you go to put the collar on it it's uh, the wires so this has to go on and I'll probably just run the wires through this and through and out here a little bit and get this uh, ready to reinstall. I just put white grease in there and fit it, make sure it all fit good, and it does. I screwed the light back in, and the reason why I did that is this wire kind of goes down and behind where that turn signal thing goes. And then I think I'm just going to put this in and screw it on and put some grease on this. And that way, this is all in because I can put that snap ring and stuff on there with this installed I think if I can I'll just pull it back off but I don't want to break the switch so I think that's why I'm just going to kind of put it together in there and then I got to get that bezel the shift bezel and put it on too all screwed in I'm gonna one of you suggested putting rope on here I think that's a good idea I have a fish tape I could probably shove through there too maybe I'll use that but then I'll just tape it all up to to this to yank it through I'll just tape this up really nice and tight and that way it'll come through well I forgot to put the chrome collar on so I gotta pull this back off and put that on and then I'll just have to be ultra careful I don't damage it well that's ultra rare yeah the thing just set it on the floor and pulled on it and it came right off so <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to fight with it but no it did come off very happy so let me uh, get my chrome collar and put it on I'm gonna have to wrap it with something to protect it wow yeah that looks amazing I'm going to uh, put this back on now I'm just gonna be ultra careful I might take a cloth and just wrap it around there and tape it so I don't uh, bugger things up on that but I'm gonna put that shift collar you can see now this wiring channel and what happened when I tried to put the wires through here and then try to put that there it just pinched right there so there's no no putting this on before you feed the wires so I'm gonna and and there's no way I can feed anything out until I this has to go on now and then I'm gonna run my fish tape through there I think out here tape the wires to it and pull them back through it would have really been upsetting to have this thing 100% together in the car and then go to put that plastic bezel goes over here and find I left that off oh, boy would that have been that would have that would have called for some magic words anyway let me uh let me get that collar back on now I got the shift collar back on so I'm gonna continue putting putting things together here I'm in the process of putting the new bezel on the collar here on the where the turn signal goes and this one was just glued on and it was all loose and floppy and everything I can find shows it glued on so I'm making this one so it'll screw on I drew I those holes were drilled so I tapped them and now these ones made a little pattern to 
drill this, this will, this is traced with this, the, the clear plastic. So I'll have to get those drilled out now. Now that looks much better. It's all hand smudged and stuff. I haven't cleaned it off yet. I'll wait until it's together to clean it all up. But that made a huge difference and I screwed it. As you saw I made a little little template on where to drill the holes. And that's not going anywhere now. That That's going to look good there. I might illuminate it just to see how it looks. There we go. That, I put my thumb over that because that uh, you know, light bleeds out around that, but it actually looks really good. It's not overpoweringly bright like it was before. It was so, it just overdrove everything, and that's probably about equivalent to the rest of the dashboard in the car. That's the back side, kind of. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I think, you know, I wanted to make sure if there was any issues with the way it illuminated, now is the time to correct it rather than when it's all together and in the car. You can see how I just shoved the fish tape through here and then I can pull the wiring back through but I gotta you know obviously attach it all to the fish tape and I'll do that with some electrical tape and then the wiring will be through so let me uh, get that taped up here. I gotta find my tape. When you tape this stuff up pull your tape tight it'll hold better take up less space and then I always like to just take the last little tab or something just kind of fold it on itself so you have something to grab to untape it. Well I think it's ready to pull the wiring through hopefully it'll go through without too much aggravation. I didn't put anything on it maybe I should have sprayed it with a little something. Well, I've lost track of how many different ways I've tried to fish this through. I've tried to fish it through with a fish tape, with a rope. I even cut that plastic nub off my fish tape and still to no avail every time that tape starts getting to, you know, the wiring loom tape starts getting down in that collar, it binds up and stops going. So I removed it all and I'm going to try and shove it through one wire at a time and we'll see where this goes. If this doesn't go anywhere, I'm going to call it quits for the day because I've been horsing with this thing for probably an hour now and I'm getting really ultra frustrated. So it's to the point where when I get like that, I usually just stop what I'm doing and leave it for another day because otherwise I'll, you know, it won't go anywhere. So I'm just going to shove one wire through at a time like that and see what happens. And uh, hopefully this will do the job. If it doesn't, well, like I say, it'll get done another day. All right, I'm taping the last two of the coat hanger. I just cannot get them through. They just do not want to go through. And I don't think I'm going to be able to even do this. We'll see. Okay, yeah, that worked. All right, last try for the day. Let's see if it goes. And it went through. Amazing. Alright, we got all the wires through. But that's, yeah, that was the only way to get those wires through was to take all, uh, completely untape them one wire at a time through that channel. Bit of a hassle, but at the end of the day, that's what I should have done to begin with. That's a little, little uh, roll pin for the shift lever, a little screw for in the I forget what that screw is, but I'll get to it when I get to that part. But that roll pin is a little short for the shift lever, so I'm going to take that to the hardware and get a longer one. And then when I put it through, if any extra sticks out, I'll cut it off neatly with the Dremel. Because I think that's why that, that collar went to heck, was this didn't go all the way through. And it just was biting a little bit into the aluminum and just hogged it out. I got the collar, the turn signal switch collar on, but I had to just take this out because I couldn't get to the nuts. And those go into a couple little 
slats over here so I, the only way you're going to get these in is if you start the nut about two threads onto the bolt in the collar and then kind of push on them so they're back in there as you put the collar over it'll push out around those and drop into the slats and you'll see when you if you take your column apart what I'm talking about then once they you get everything in those can go right into those slats and you can tighten these up and then it's together and then of course you want to make sure your shift thing moves its full amount that it can and that moves very nice and easy now with new lube in there and uh, I'm gonna have to wipe you know all this has got grease all over it from my hands and I'll wipe it all up when I'm done clean it all up but until then you know it's just kind of pointless so I'm gonna finish pulling and I did tape a little bit of this wiring here where it goes through I don't want to put some little bit of white grease on this right here this is the turn signal what the turn signal stock screws into and uh, I want that to not bind up in there so a little grease on that and I want to put that wire for the light back down in to the there's a little fits kind of right down in there so I gotta find I think this is the wire to the light so I'll pull that as I pull this back into place so it doesn't get pinched in there and cause a future short There we go. That pulled it down in there. All right, now let me just, uh, I gotta pull this main harness through just a smidge more. Might have to pull it back out and pull some tape. Oh no, it's, it's going right in. So that's right where I want it. There we go, all together. So let me put this uh, back on and screw it down and then this part of the column is together and I can put the steering shaft in and the little snap rings and stuff in the steering column less the shift lever and turn signal stock it'll be basically complete so I'll give it a final touch uh, clean up and a little touch up here and there or if I nicked any paint anywhere about ready to put the connectors back on so you gotta peel these little this little tab right here whether that shows up or not in the video I can't really tell on the screen but that's what holds it into the into this connector so to get that to stay you gotta pull those back out when I took them out I pushed them in so that they wouldn't uh, hold it in you know so you could get the connector that special tool is just a little like tube that slides over these pins and pushes that thing in so you can pull it out it's just like a barb is all it is when you so I just like to pull them out a little bit and uh, it doesn't matter what order you do them in you just got to do them all and then you can push them back into the plugs and if I tried to push them back into the plug right now without doing this it just pull right back out wouldn't stay in the plug they don't need to be out a long ways. All right, they're all they all look pretty good, but I'll leave the tool there just in case. And I get out my little plug diagram. This is the way the plug was sitting on here. So this front one right here is a solid yellow. See how that latches in there now? If I didn't pry that out, that would pull out. The next one is a solid green and I'm going to try and pull these wires around through in ways such to where it is the least tangled two is green and that's a solid I don't see any tracers on it the next one is a blue solid blue that looks like this one. Okay, so we got those three. Now we need white with a blue tracer. That would be this one. Let's see, maybe that was better off out the 
other side here. And that will be the first one here in hole number four. And then we got green with a white tracer. And I always double check to make sure I can't pull them out. And then I got blue with the yellow tracer. That's the blue with the yellow. Whoops. There we go. There's one connector and then this is the little connector and you can see when I hold it up there, we'll double check it. Yellow, green, blue, white with a blue tracer, green with a white tracer, blue with the yellow tracer. So that's all the way the plug connector came out. And then this one is, you can see the little rib there, I drew the picture. So the orange with the blue is an A, which is this wire, goes in that terminal. And then the green with the brown goes in this terminal. And there we go. And then I'll tape this extra wiring up like it originally was. This is for the light, for the shift indicator. And uh, obviously this was separate wire from the turn signal harness because if it was a manual shift column it would not have this component in it. I can see where this used to originally be taped to because I can still see some of the residue on the wires so I'm going to kind of do it like this. And it looks like I'll have some, maybe I'll start taping from the other end and that way if there's any extra it's down here like so like it originally was so I'm just gonna and I'm gonna tape all the wires the, the light wire and everything just because I think it'll look neater and uh, you can kind of see how I do it and then when I get towards the end I'll uh, start recording again and then when I come up here I want to separate these so I kind of do this And that's about the way as far as that was taped and about the way it was taped up originally. Close enough. So there we go. The wiring harness I'm going to call that. Yeah, those wires are a little long right there, but that's not going to that's not going to hurt anything. That's why it was when I took it apart. And these wires maybe I'll give them a little more tape. Ah, just leave them. They're, they're fine like that. And uh, just coming out of the harness like they did originally. All right, there we go. The, the harness is taped up. That's taped right to the end, like it originally was. So that, they must have taped this after they fed it through because originally that's exactly how it was taped, the way it is right there where it comes out to where there's a little bit of wire showing. Just like that. That's exactly the way it originally was. Really, the steering column is basically ready to go back in the car. The Shift collar all works nice, all full length. Now, a lot of people commented like when it was in drive, it was beyond, or it was one side or the other, I don't remember, but they didn't sit exactly. And there's no really changing that because those marks I showed you in here, the D-dent for the lever locks it in those positions, and you really need it when it's locked in those positions for the transmission to be in the proper gear. So adjusting the transmission linkage on the end down here is really not going to do a lot of good you know if you if you have this in drive say right there locked in and yet the lever still can move more it can actually shift the valve body to low so you really need to have this locked in its positions when it's in that gear and if it's a little beyond so be it you just get used to it but I think that um That'll work fine. It's, it's. Uh, I, I'll wipe all my greasy smudgies off before I reinstall it in the car because I'm gonna get more smudgies all over it, and I may need to touch up the spot or two after it's, you know, installed. But right now it looks pretty good. I put this around here just to kind of protect this part of the collar and where that chrome piece is. 
why I was horsing with all this. And uh, but basically, yeah. So it's the steering shaft is super nice and and turns really nice now. I mean, what a difference! Yeah, just relubricating everything, cleaning it up, and new grease and stuff made a gigantic difference. And having this on here secure now and not a green one actually a chrome one <laughs> the other one was faded to, or the chrome was worn away and it was kind of green so right now i'm just waiting on parts i'm waiting on the dash pad interior kit really i mean without it i don't know what else i'm going to do so we'll just i'll just look around here for a few minutes and then see if there's something else i can work on i'm using my old camera so if it's a little shaky so be it i use it when it's on the tripod and it's just easier to not to have to have two cameras of files to go through and edit. It's just easier if I use one camera or the other. But seeing I was doing a lot of tripod work on this one, that's why I keep the old one on my tripod. So there we go. Together, like I say, ready to ready to reinstall. You can see the red pointer on there. Let's put it in the proper drive. There, that's drive. That's all three gears. That's second only. That's low. When you're driving the car, that's where you want the, the shifter at. And seeing I took photos of this too, I can take my connector and hold it up here and you can see a yellow and a blue like that. And then when I turn the page, let's see that's that's, uh, yeah, that's this side. You can see the white, green trace, the green with white trace, and the blue with yellow trace. It does have a tracer on there, as you can see, maybe. And then that is this side, like so. And you can see all the wiring is correct. And then the last but not least is this one which is like this. So you can see all the wiring and that's just double checking all my wiring. I always, you know, but always write it on paper too. So if something happens to your phone, you're not, you know, trying to guess where things were. Another thing I did was I took car wax to that chrome paint. This was as shiny as chrome right here. And when I was done, it kind of looks like a highly metallic paint instead of chrome where I didn't do it like over here it's chrome this is just you know I just been really abusive of this I've tried rubbing compound on it I've tried different things but the wax actually the rubbing compound just dulls it down but the wax does shine it but it makes it look more like metallic paint than chrome so probably the best thing to do is just you know if you need to clean it just wipe it with a damp cloth don't use any waxes or anything on it and uh, I'm looking into there was a clear coat that would work with this so I am looking into trying that I might take the old uh, bezel and take the plastic lens out and paint that with the chrome paint and clear coat it and see what it does just you know just play with things and you know I have the old bezel it's of no value so I mess it up no no loss but you know I thought I'd give it a try so I am gonna try and try and order some of that clear coat yet today so when I get ready to put the steering column back in the car I'm gonna use this luber plate and the spline that goes in the steering gear just a just a little bit just so it doesn't get rusted or stuck onto the steering gear if it future has to come off or maybe some maybe I'll use anti-seize instead down there so I don't get leakage out and make it look like you know the steering gear or something's leaking so I'll probably use anti-seize and then the same with this spline right here I'll put something on it just so in the future if the steering wheel has to come off to replace the light bulb or whatever it uh, doesn't require you know a lot of effort to, it won't stick on there or seize on there but I did clean all this up and everything is nicely cleaned and lubricated and working totally free and the dashboard, like I say, I'm waiting on the pad. I'm still waiting on the interior kit. 
So really, I'm at a standstill. I'm probably going to um, work on making a planter thing. I got I have a ton of plants in the house, and some of them need a little extra light, so I bought one of these LED grow lights, and I want to make a little thing to hang it from. I don't want to mount anything into the walls of the house, any, you know, brackets on the wall for it or hang it from the ceiling. So I'm going to weld up something, you know, like a shepherd's hook or something with a base, steel base or something that the pot can sit on. And uh, that way the plant can get, a couple plants require a lot of sun and they're not just getting it this time of year and they're, they're losing leaves and they just need a little assistance with some additional light. So I have two of them that it can kind of sit in between them and help them out. So that's going to be my next project is might work on that this weekend until I get the pad and the or the interior kit, you know, I want to put fit the pad to the dash before I put it back in, and I'd really like to put the dash in before I put this back in. I think it'll just make life a lot easier. I don't want to scratch this up putting the dash in. I don't want to scratch, you know, either one of them up because this is in the way or something, you know. I just don't want to put too much work into trying to make it look nice to take, you know, to not just wait until I get everything to do it properly. So right now, the, there isn't, you know, I yeah, I could take the hood off and start stripping it, but I'm not going to do that now. The weather, you know, maybe, maybe mid to late February when we get some 50, 60 degree days, and then I can repaint the hood. And uh, I want to buff some paint out on it, but I want the car together with the interior and everything. That will be the last thing, the very last thing I do is buff paint. And, I might uh, call a chrome plater in the next day or two and see how the chromes come along because it'd be nice to put the shift lever back on this with it out of the car. It'd make it a heck of a lot easier. So maybe that's what I'll do today. I'll order some of that clear coat and call a plater to see how the, the chrome stuff's come along. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. And, uh, you know, thank you for sitting there through all this fiasco trying to get this wiring through and stuff. I probably spent about an hour maybe horsing around with it and then I just realized well it's a tape. Every time it was a tape that was catching and holding me up the, the loom tape. So I figured well if I take that off I'll probably get it through and that worked out pretty good. So yeah if you do one of these put your wires through without them taped up at all and then tape them and like I say that's the way it looked like it originally was. I did did put a little tape up here on the wiring from the switch to where it goes through that hole so if the collar or anything rubs on it, it doesn't rub the insulation off. I kind of taped that part of it, about that much of it, from the switch back really good. So anything that might rub on it is not going to chafe the wire insulation. So this is, I'm not going to put the neutral start switch, it's the neutral start reverse light switch is not going back on until it's installed in the dash. I don't want to take a chance on breaking it. They're just, they're not available. And uh, so I repaired the, the original one. This is the switch. And basically it's like a couple carburetor check vault balls in there that slide on this that make contact. I think I showed it in a past video. All these, I, I took it apart. I think I videoed it. But there's a couple contacts in here and there's little BBs in here and that just joins those contacts so so two of them are for the starter motor which is obviously park and neutral and one is for your reverse lights it's pretty simple not much to it but those BBs wore out fell out and I don't think you can see yeah I can see one of them from this end I don't know if you can or not but anyway that that uh that is a repaired, that's the original switch repaired. And they're, they're check balls, fuel pump, accelerator pump check balls is what I ended up using to fix this neutral start switch. So again, I don't want to take a, even the slightest risk of damaging it. So that is going to wait until everything is totally together before I put this on. So anyway, that's it for this video. If you like it, definitely hit the like button. 
If you want to see this thing back together eventually in the future, subscribe to my channel by hitting that 348 engine icon that pops up there. And thank you for watching my videos.